So we want to take limits not only when x is approaching a number a, but when x is approaching infinity, whatever that might mean. Now, here's a definition. To say the limit of f of x equals l as x approaches infinity means this, that for all epsilon greater than 0, there's some number n so that whenever x is bigger than n, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So I mean, what, what should something like this mean? Right? This should be saying that I can make f of x as close as you want to l by making x sufficiently large. And that's exactly what this is saying. For all epsilon greater than 0, this is how close you want f of x to be to l. I get to then respond by picking some big N so that whenever x is bigger, than that big number n, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Right? The absolute value of this difference is measuring how far apart f of x and l are. So I can make f of x within epsilon of l, provided x is big enough. How big? Well, that's this n. And the n, of course, will, will depend upon epsilon. Right? If you want f of x to be really close to l, well, then I'll probably have to make n really big in order to guarantee that f of x is really as close as you want to l. All right, well, let's, let's see an example of this, right? Let's try to do an example where we can see this working. So here's a claim. The limit of 1 over x, x goes to infinity, is, well, what should this be, right? What is 1 over x getting close to when x is really big? It's getting close to 0. Right? So that's what I want to show. I want to show the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is 0. What this really means is that I can make 1 over x as close as you want to 0 with an epsilon, provided x is sufficiently large. So this argument is going to start out, let epsilon be bigger than 0. right? How, how close do you want 1 over x to be to 0? Right? And then I'm going to set n equal to some big number. I'm going to assume that x is bigger than n. Something's going to happen. And then I'm going to conclude that f of x, which is 1 over x in this case, is really within epsilon of 0. I'm going to conclude that 1 over x minus 0 is less than epsilon. Well, there's some cloud things here that I've got to fill in, right? I've got to pick some number big N so that if I assume x is bigger than N, then some argument will convince me that 1 over x is less than epsilon in absolute value. Well, one way to think about this is try to work backwards, right? I want 1 over x to be close to 0. I want 1 over x to be less than epsilon. So what might I want? I, if, if I want 1 over x to be less than epsilon, that's really the same thing as saying that I want x to be bigger than 1 over epsilon. Right? If I knew that x were bigger than 1 over epsilon, then 1 over x would be smaller than epsilon. Right? So since this is true, 1 over x is smaller than epsilon. Epsilon is positive, so if x is bigger than 1 over epsilon, then x is also positive. 1 over x right, is also positive. So this is, in fact, between 0 and, and epsilon. Right, so if x is bigger than 1 over epsilon, then 1 over, eps, then 1 over x is between 0 and epsilon, which means that 1 over x is between minus epsilon and epsilon, which is really what this absolute value statement is saying. So how can I guarantee that x is bigger than 1 over epsilon? Well, I'm going to set n equal to 1 over epsilon. Right? So I'll make this n 1 over epsilon. And, and now look at what I've got here. I set n equals 1 over epsilon. And then I get to assume that x is bigger than n. Right? You're challenging me with epsilon to say that 1 over x is within epsilon of 0. I get to respond by making x sufficiently large. How large? Well, I get to pick big N equals 1 over epsilon. That's how big I want x to be. And if x is bigger than n, then x is bigger than what n's equal to, which is 1 over epsilon. And if x is bigger than 1 over epsilon, then 1 over x is between 0 
and epsilon. And if 1 over x is between 0 and epsilon, then 1 over x is between minus epsilon and epsilon. And that means the absolute value of 1 over x minus 0 is less than epsilon, which is what I wanted. I wanted 1 over x to be within epsilon of 0. OK, so this is an argument that hopefully convinces you that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity really is 0. And at this point, then, you're challenged to try to produce other arguments similar to this, right? Can you convince me, for example, that the limit of 1 over x squared as x goes to infinity is equal to 0? And I'll leave that for you. Good luck.